for organizing the event. The following program was provided by a valued member of our local community. Rogers TV is proud to support local producers and share local voices, ideas, and opinions. For more information, please visit our website. Welcome back to season two. Season two, yeah. yeah this yeah. is the very first episode of season two. Last year we had uh, we did thirty episodes. Uh, we started the very first one was actually you and I sitting down, and then we had an interactive one. So I thought that we'd actually start this season, uh, second season, once again with Glenn. Yes, I remember last year when you got started, we had to figure out the technology yep. and everything of what we were going to do. Then we had to sit down, but I remember the second one was your plein air one. Do you remember we went do. down into Wortley I Village? Do. And that was such a challenge because it rained a bit that day. We didn't know the, how to do mics. No, the wind was uh, howling at times. Cars were going by right where people were doing the plein air paintings. But we figured it out. Uh, it was great. I think that that experience taught me that technology is good enough right now like neither one of us are experts but we can overall we have enough to get the job done but I really enjoyed watching it afterwards because at that venue there were so many artists it's almost like the artistic community was alive and it was there what was your sense of that that plein air session well that very first session and it was a plein air in Wortley Village during the summer um, I felt way over my head uh, on the number, I've yeah. way over my head in terms of, you know, some of the artists I knew, some of them I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, just filming and asking questions at the same time as worrying about where I was standing, viewing. But but even when we came back and listened to the audio, all I could hear was the mistakes, because I was mm -hmm. I was still obviously hadn't done it before. Yeah. Um, but take it to the very end. We did thirty episodes last year, and I was just obviously a lot more comfortable and able to set things up. But I mean. I'm I'm a jump in kind of person, um, but I, you know, it, even though I felt over in over my head, I was I was happy to do it and happy to actually be part of it. Yeah, and I I kind of wondered, to be honest, and we don't know the answer to this, what the artistic community would have thought of you doing that. Right, uh, because you were focusing not so much on yourself, although you, you did some there, but mostly on them. And it was our first real experience of reaching out to that community and say, hey, you know, uh, Jane really wants to promote you and the work that you're doing and show art in the community. And it was my sense that they were very open to you that day. Yeah, no, it was wonderful. I That day I was actually supposed to be plein air painting myself. And plein air means like full air as in outside. outside yeah, yeah, and it's, it's a, a unique challenge being able to kind of paint outside um, and so the ability to go around kind of as an artist and speak to speak to them and see what they were doing seeing the progress um, you know and just and just chat, chatting with them yeah. I think that was really great so it was a bit of a learning uh, learning curve for me I think the other thing I really enjoyed is they're you know getting the word out about artists themselves and so that was kind of the first jump in into to be able to just say okay here this is what I'm, this is what we're doing yeah. which i thought was really great yeah I, I think we should before we go any farther give a real shout out to rogers and oh, melissa, yeah. melissa yeah. at rogers i mean i i was doing a show that year as well called food bites and it was once a week as well and i mean i, I think that they what they did is that they just left it up to us to try to do what we thought was best but what I thought was wonderful is that they really liked the idea of you doing a show about art because there was kind of a vagueness there about it a, a lot of a lot of people know that there's an artistic community in London but there wasn't a lot of definition to it there's a few well-known artists but 
people didn't know of all the various kinds of whatever is and, and Melissa Rogers said to you just knock yourself out you know do, do the best thing that, that, that you can that you feel is necessary I thought she was awesome yeah you know it's kind of it's mirroring my own artistic journey where I haven't necessarily known what to do but I jump in you find yeah. mentors you find people um, that can help you Adam Rogers was really great at actually mentoring us a little bit with regards to you know programs that we use the microphones that we now use and a lot of those things that created some problems for us um, you know they helped us get better and better over time and I thought that was great I mean I think there if you're in the artistic community you tend to you know a little bit about what's going on in your corner of the world yeah. um, but you know with um, there's so many kind of corners and there's so many pieces to it it's it's able it's great just to be able to shine all the different things that are kind of yeah. going on and I think that was the main reason for the show and I I think it like I learned a lot from it mm -hmm. definitely um, I thought it was last year was really great overall I think for Rogers it was uh, you know when the pandemic came prior to the pandemic people would go into the studio at Rogers right mm -hmm. and then we did that so many times for the food bank and Sudan and other things but after the pandemic now all of a sudden people weren't coming in anymore and uh, they were trying to depend on the outside community uh, to bringing in some ideas and other things and I think for them it was an adjustment too and they probably learned from looking at you and, and definitely from me that these are people that are not necessarily professionals at all right but it could be interesting enough for an audience to um, to see it but I, I do think it was kind of a symbiotic relationship with mm -hmm. both I mean Rogers and, and, and you a really kind of advantage both yeah. in that way but you know I remember the first one we had we were just sitting here and talking right that we did last year and in, in you're pretty studio. nervous yeah you were nervous um, but you know you talked about going out into that art community now and you felt that one of your real motives was you wanted them to emerge you wanted you know people to understand what the artistic community was like and also who the artists were so you did 30 shows over the course of the last year what did you learn what did you learn about that community yeah you know I I think I learned that the community was incredibly diverse mm -hmm. um, you know and the artists themselves have you know as many answers to the questions as there are artists so yeah if you if you ask a question like what is art you get 30 different answers yeah. to those things so i think the diversity was pretty amazing i i think um so i want to keep exploring more individual artists and what they're doing and kind of showcasing it and part of it was about showing what the artists actually do so showing their studio and showing some of their process um, I think that's the piece that most people like the best is is kind of the action piece in terms mm -hmm. of seeing seeing how something was created um, we showcased actually some groups doing art so it was actually whether it was events at the let's say at the factory or uh, arts for all kids a group actually doing things or partic you know particularly the plein air event yeah. um, I, I think those were kind of great things to be able to say look there are all these these different things kind of going on yeah. um, obviously the galleries have events um, but there's a lot like there's places to go to art right and there's there's art based events or there's art fundraisers um, I think I think those were great um, I think I talked to a fair number of some historical and I shouldn't call them historical artists because that's not true but they've been around the London scene for a long time mm -hmm. and London has a rich art history mm -hmm. and, and I when the camera was turned off the amount of things I learned was just absolutely amazing um, and so about their experiences you mean or well, technique or what well actually about just London's place in art history and yeah. Canadian art history mm -hmm. you know um, I mean we know about Jack Chambers and, and Greg Curnow or maybe we don't but there's there's movements that have been within London um, and uh, you know was kind of the seat of what they call re regionalism mm -hmm. you know decades ago but you know we have got some amazing artists right within our right within our city um, some we know and some we don't um, I think I think that was great mm -hmm. and then I think there's just a, there's there's more and more thinkers and there's you know people who who explore and educators um, and I think I want to explore that a lot you know whether it's Beale art um, mm -hmm. you know obviously I spoke to a number of teachers or a number of great artists who are teachers as well mm -hmm. and Kevin Weiss comes to mind but yeah. um, you know I think and oh, and my and my my high school, my high school art teacher and my mentor oh, and, and yeah. Jamie, obviously. Yeah. But I, 
I think there's just still yeah. so much to explore, and I look at all the things that I didn't get to. So I'm yeah. kind of excited about this year. And who was your teacher in high school again? Ruth Ann Murner. Ruth Ann Murner. Yeah. Mrs. Murner. So she's actually quite active in um, South Huron and very active in Grand Bend, and she's a ceramic artist. She, you know, she's inviting me to come out and do some raccoon, some pottery, uh, raccoon, sorry, ceramics. It's not pottery. Mm. Some ceramics with her, uh, kind of a fire base thing. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to doing that at some point. And when I was she thought, you know, you were in high school and you were being taught by her, and then off you went to Sudan and and to all these different places in Africa and Iraq during the Iraq War. She probably thought, okay, she's moved on from art, right? She's got this other life, food bank, other things that's rich and diverse. Uh, was she? Um, did she have any thoughts about that? About that you? are still at art and still working our way through? Did she think, think you had left? <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't actually talk about that too much, but I think I am a good example of um, a number of people in the kind of creative journey who um, were creative in their younger years and then through life and through other choices, like got busy and other things. Um, and they always obviously made room for their kids to get involved in art. <laughs> now lots of responsibilities happen, like they're coming back to it and they're working on it. And I I, I think it's great to be 60 years old and kind of suck at something, but <laughs> but really work to get better at it. Yeah. And and I think there's a, there's a whole movement within London of people like that. And I, th I think that's great. Yes, I've I've met just through you, but so many people that are like that that they were managers in business or they were teachers, right? They they, they worked in an assembly line, whatever they all the different things were. Many of them had been through grief and lost lost loved ones, or had retired, uh, or had moved on, or whatever. Uh, and yet, so many of them were now coming to art. Right to express themselves now at this later point in their life, it was more of a reflective state. Um, but also, they had painted earlier, right? And but as you said, life got busy, and now they they came back to it. I did wonder, did I love the plein air piece because that was everybody out of their element, right? From that standpoint, they didn't go off into a little woodland somewhere and paint it. They were in the middle of Wortley Village, mm -hmm. all the pandemonium and everything that was going on. Do, do you see a difference in the artists outside? of their setting as opposed to when you interviewed them in the studios? Um, so plein air presents its own challenge and it's kind of painting on steroids in many ways. Just you have to make a lot of decisions pretty quickly and it's not terribly refined. I, actually it is can be terribly refined but it's very expressive and it's mm -hmm. very in the moment and there are technical challenges that happen, you know, paint that gets, you know, canvases that get wet, paint like oil won't dry so you can't layer, whatever mm. it is. So I, you have to, it really speeds up your learning process when you get out there. So I think, you know, the plein air pieces were watching people paint because they couldn't just stop and talk. They had to keep painting as they were going. I, I love the immediacy of that and yeah. I love the emotion that kind of comes with that. But it's, you know, getting into some Somebody's studio is kind of seeing where they live, right? Yeah. And I and how they and how they operate. And I actually, you know, like this is a little messy and a little kind of crazy. And I just, you know, I, some people are more emotional painters, um, mm -hmm. and some people are, you know, a lot more technical. Um, I I love going into studios because that's in many mm -hmm. ways when when I talk. Well, what do you do? Like, how did you do that? I thought that that was really great. I think the studio is people's office, so mm -hmm. to be able to come in. Um, is great. So we did a couple of shows on the studio tour, for instance. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah, and and that was a great kind of way to go and see a number of, uh, you know, what people did and how they did it. And it, it's always just not painting, right? It's might be steampunk sculpture. It might there was a there was a willow uh, willow. I hate to hesitate to call her basket maker, but they, you know, like a willow weaver yeah. with making baskets. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just it, it was amazing all the different things that were kind of around. Um, so I think I think that. That's great, but there is, you know, the the couple of pieces that were missing from last year was kind of public art, right? You know, mm -hmm. so you know, going to the the, you know, we've got a great gallery here, um, a public yeah. gallery. We've got Macintosh, great gallery. We've got some great collections, um, you know, but there's there's art in the middle of London. So going to find that, going on tours. I know the Art Council and the London Regional Art Gallery, for instance, the Historical Museum, like they take people on tours around the city. So yeah. whether it's graffiti or some of the tree sculptures, or there's some, there's some pretty amazing things in our city as well. 
So can you be somewhat honest with me? You said you saw in the artistic community here in London a lot of diversity. <laughs> is there a cohesiveness to it, or is it really just in different parts? Yeah, you know, it, people, different people have different answers to that question, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I think. And for me, I don't know yet enough. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a public side and there's a private side. There's an education side and there's kind of a commercial side. Um, I think there's... You know, somebody, a group like the London Arts Council is trying to represent professional artists, right, in terms of those. And a lot of professional artists are really struggling right now. So I think there are, like, there's lobby and advocacy sides. So I, I don't really know yet. I do know that um, artists live... As much as we are out in the community, most most artists live within the world um, and are creating within the world. Mm -hmm. So it kind of ex it comes from themselves in terms of their expression. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I don't know. It's that's a that's a tough one to answer, to be honest. Well, it's like the social service community. Yeah, you know, it's, can they speak with one voice? Actually, yeah. no. Yeah, it's that, a it's a bunch of different. They have things. similar sentiments yeah. and they're involved in similar ways, but you know, it's it, and a lot of that stuff happens in exclusion, and that would especially be true for artists. Hundred percent, yeah. Right, where social agencies have to mix a lot more in that sense. So, we talked about what you learned about the art community and what you saw in it in that first year in those yeah. first thirty shows. What did you learn about yourself what, as an artist? What, as an artist. Well, there's there's a couple things that which are kind of interesting. I I think um, what I've learned about myself is that I still I'm not a very good artist uh, yet. I can I'm learning to paint, um, but I don't really know what I have to say outside of really supporting others. Mm -hmm. I think I think I'm I think I really have a role in you know shining that spotlight on um, on others. I mm -hmm. think that way I can kind of serve them, and I think that fits in. But I think what I've what I've been learning more is there's certain artistic and creative principles that you learn when you draw or that's or you're painting um, that actually actually are pretty applicable to life. So Give you know, an example. Well, um, so you go plein air painting, you got so much information and you're looking around and what do you you know, what are you gonna paint? It's mm. detailed or it's broad. Um, you sometimes you just gotta pick one thing and go with it. And then, you know, when they talk about, you know, when you're drawing and you first start to draw, you basically have to you're not supposed to get caught in the details. You fuzz your eyes and put them out of focus so you can see the main shapes because it's the main shapes that matter, all mm -hmm. the little details. And it's the same thing in life. Sometimes we get caught in those little details that we have to pull back and, and focus and see what the bigger things are yeah. behind it. So I think I think there's some interesting things like that um, that I found kind of, oh yeah, that that's actually quite applicable. It's, so it's kind of like the, you know, everything I learned about life I learned in kindergarten. <laughs> right? It's kind of like keep 10 rules. And in, in many ways, it's just, you know, it's, it's how, it's how we learn. But those things actually help us in, in kind of, you know, navigating life, I thought, or na help, shouldn't say help us, help me in navigating life a little bit. Yes, yeah, so I was with you in a couple of the interviews you did. One was during the plein air thing, and, and I remember we saw the, the gentleman from Ukraine. Yeah. And he was Love really it. good. Yeah, it was yeah. very good. Uh, his art was really great, but, you know, it was happening in a time of his life where his homeland was in tumult, yeah. right? There was all the war going on there. It was so difficult. And and you sometimes forget that. You look at a person doing art, they're an artist, but they actually come from life, and sometimes a very rich life. Um, and, and I, I really learned that watching him. He was trying to respond to you. You just walked up as yeah. he was painting and said, can I talk to you for a minute? And, and I remember in the middle of that life, someone was coming in and, and trying to interview about it. But our fascination with him was pretty strong, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I just, he was an excellent painter uh, for one thing, but I just thought he was great. And then we interviewed somebody else that had struggled through cancer, right? And, and, and was having a difficult Doing time. That, yeah. Yes, but that came out to towards the end of the interview and, and you, you realize that these are artists that go through these journeys of the soul, right? And, and many of them were older and rich with experience. You know, they were not just disappointed, they had successes in their life, watch the kids move on or, or whatever it is. Are you like that? Like, uh, are, are you bringing more and more to your painting that's you 
or is it still kind of a technique that you're still trying to learn yet? Is that is that that's an a okay really good question? That's an okay question. It's a really good question. Um, I think you, when you talk about sort of an artistic voice. Um, it's kind of, you know, is it a journey? Is it a trail? Is it like a little hamster wheel you get on every day? Um, I don't think I yet know what I'm about as far as the art goes, per se. I know what I like, and that's what I'm following. And I know what I want to learn. Um, and I am and I won't be happy about the technique until I can do what I want to do in the head. But I, I basically am, am an emotive painter, so that I've discovered that about myself. Um, as far as, um, you know, my I'm not great at detail. I want to do big emotional um, brush strokes. But what does it mean and what am I trying to say in that? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And I think it's partly because when you... Um, I don't have an art degree, but I went all through high school with art, and you're learning about all these artists who had something to say in terms of a movement, um, or they had big things to say. Sometimes it was social, sometimes mm-hmm. it was just basically on the state of things. I think... Um, I don't, I don't know that I have anything to say yet outside of I just want to serve people. And I want to, I love painting. I, it's frustrating as I'll get out, but I just, I do love to, to, to get, to, my, to finish a painting, actually. Yeah. So. My sense of it is actually there's a third person in our life. Uh-oh. Um, in hockey? <laughs> no, in hockey, we'll talk about that. But uh, uh, the... Um, Jamie Jardine is your mentor. Yes. So when you when you said earlier that you know I'm not all that good an art or, uh, artist, I'm doing okay, but I don't sense a lot of frustration with you from that. I did. Uh, I saw you as you interviewed others who did feel that frustration. They couldn't quite get over to whatever that next piece was. I would presume that having a guide or a mentor, not just if you hit a block or something, but just to discuss art with, look at the different varieties of it. It seems to me that Jamie has been successful at just continuing to move you on. So you're not sitting there so frustrated with yourself. You're trying your experiment. You're doing joint pieces with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, with, with, is that a true I, I think observation? It's, yeah, I think I think it's true in the context of I think Jamie has given me enough confidence um, and enough technique to be able to jump in. I'm just I'm not confident yet enough finishing. So when we do our joint pieces, I'm really good at just going, and and he's really good at telling stop. Um, and so you know we, I, I think um, I think that's been good. I I'm not frustrated overall. But it's true, I get into things, and it's really frustrating sometimes. It's like, I don't know where I take a piece sometimes when I'm by myself. So I just, you know what, I play and have fun, and and, and we'll see where it goes. That's, so, different. That's different about you, though. Yeah. I mean, I've, um, we've been at the food bank now 39 years, mm-hmm. right? Um, we, uh, I've known you for longer than that. Um, so if you're frustrated with it, I don't really see it. And I see you yeah. every day, right? You have the kind of disposition that it really is happy in what you're doing and you find that joy. So I would presume that sometimes personality, if you were really grumpy, uh, right, as a person, <laughs> you and I would be having our troubles. But I mean, you, uh, you might take that out on your art too and be really frustrated. But it seems to me your life is very diverse. You've got a mentor, right? You, you're doing fantastic work at the food bank. Um, it seems to me that your life is fairly full. So therefore, running into certain blockages or things like that in art, not everything is related to that. No, I... And so therefore, all those other things help you to move on. Is that, is that a good observation? Well, I think it's true. It's kind of like life, right? Like, yeah. I, I think I, I think we all get frustrated when something kind of doesn't work out and you're trying to figure it out. I think I've learned enough just to go, okay. Yeah. Um, Finished is better than perfect. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing in our life. So I think, I th- I think I have a philosophy which goes: if I paint enough, one of them is going to be good. Yeah. To some degree, um, and as long as I just keep painting, um, I think that's what I that's what I need to do. And my, to some degree, the more you paint, the better you get, the the higher your standard yeah. is. So you n- will never be satisfied. But I just. Um, it, it's kind of like doing these things. They'll get better the more that we do them. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's great. I'm, I'm ha- really happy about that. So. so I should say that uh, last year Jane finished season one in June around then, but she had also just come back from in the provincial gold medal for seniors women's hockey, right? So I should do a whole hockey series. Yeah, do a hockey <laughs> series. Anyway, she won that, and so um, that was awesome. But then you went to the nationals in Quebec City in August, and you won gold. 
gold. He didn't <laughs> lose the team won the, gold. The team won. I know. Yeah, I, I get all of that. But the, you know, you you've come back from that. Now you're a national champion, and it's it's great. And we're also excited about that. It, it, it it's really super. So I know you have that sense of accomplishment, and it's good. On the other hand, you're also now moving into a kind of manic season at the food bank. Mm -hmm. Six thousand families a month. We're trying to help all these different agencies. Life is changing. More people in need. It's really difficult. So, in many ways, you've you're kind of a, in a bit of a different place than you were when you first started this a year ago. What what do you have in store for season two, or have you thought about that and where you want? Yeah, you know, um, I think I want to do more of the same, um, mm -hmm. but I think I'll, I'll hopefully do better at it. But I I've got a hit list of folks. Um, so the next show is actually going to be um, showcasing I think called Between the Boards, uh, which is St. Thomas and Elgin. Mm -hmm. um, they and so we'll talk about it next week. Um, but it was kind of like a plein air, um, a plein air setting, um, and then there'll be a show a little bit later on. Um, you know, there's a couple of like I haven't gone to the pre the public galleries, so I've, you know, we've got um, the London Regional Art Gallery, we've got the Macintosh Gallery, which mm -hmm. is of course is up at Western. Um, there is the Art Council, so these are in terms of all groups. Um, you know, the Unity Project does a fundraiser up with art. I wasn't able to get to it this year. I, you know, I'd like to try to, last year, I'd like to try to get to it if I can this year. Um, and then there's still more and more artists um, in yeah. terms of, you know, to chat with. Whether it's, so we're going to go to Beale Art as well. Uh, we're going to talk to, yeah, we're going to yeah. talk to some, you know, some of the young students. Um, now, Indigenous artists don't like to be, they're just, they're artists, but there's a, we've got, there's some tremendous artists within the city of mm -hmm. as well, um, you know, that talk about social things, and um, I, I think, I think there's some, some great folks, there's some, you know, there's some other artists that have been on my hit list that I just haven't been able to get to, some photographers, some sculptors, um, I do want to go to uh, the neighbor around the corner, which actually weaves the baskets, I think that would be really yeah. interesting, and then I think, I think, um, a couple of the, the comments that came back from the public in terms of their favorite shows were the ones where we actually did something. So it wasn't just the talking. So uh, I think I finished up with a bit of a, hey, how to do a poppy. So I, I might do more of the how-to shows because I think those are yeah. those are good ones to kind of like, hesitate to call them fill in. But, um, did you do any segments with Jamie Jardy? I did two segments with you Jamie Jardy. Did Were you yeah. planning on doing more? Um, maybe, mm -hmm. actually. I, I think we, Jamie and I, but interestingly enough, are continuing to paint, but we have been starting to talk a little bit about kind of maybe a teaching format or some other things. Yeah. So, we'll, but, so we'll see. No, yeah. that's really good. Yeah. So actually, I wanted to, when we started this, I wanted to share this with Jamie, but uh, it became a little, I, I think our schedules didn't kind of mesh and that's what's It's not just that. He is kind of a recluse, right? <laughs> like you try to get him involved and uh, He's such an amazing uh, artist. He is. But he, but he, you know, he just like. Jamie, to, I know you're watching this. He, you like to keep your own world, Jamie, and, and I understand that. But the world needs to see your talent and how great it is. But you know, um, our time is up. But uh, I think it's it's awesome that you've taken on season two. Uh, at Rogers, there's been some changes, so you have to take on more of the ownership of that yourself yep. this year. So yep. you're going to have to do a bit more work that way, and it's also copyrighted to you now from that point on. But do you feel now that this is coming? I mean, we got a massive challenge in front of us at the food bank. Yeah. Yep. Um, do you feel ready for this second season now? Like, I know you've got some ideas of what you want to do, but do you think a lot of that nervous stuff and stuff you go through at the beginning, that's largely past and just ready to get into it and just experience it? Um, I, I think what's great about Rogers in that context is because it's community driven, um, is that the plan will to have a new ep have a new episode every week? Yeah. Um, last year, some of those episodes didn't work for technical reasons. Yeah. You know, the laptop died, or it just yeah. it didn't upload properly, or mm -hmm. whatever it was. Um, but this year, they'll be really good with me if, for any reason, I I can't do it so it might be there might be a gap and we might run an episode for an extra week and i i actually think that's pretty good and yeah. that's built around kind of the schedule and obviously the fact the fact that the food bank is yeah. just it's just so busy it is and a lot of you who are watching support the food bank we thank you for that but i wish you the best yeah, for this thanks, second Clint. year jane thanks for all Gold your support medal champion by the way. now and um
it, it's going to it's going to be awesome. But I appreciate you including me because I watch all of this, and sometimes I'm involved with you in the production of the shows. But it's fascinating to watch and be a part of it. So thanks for including me today. Yeah. But you're now on your way to the second season. Then be sure you watch because there's lots of great things to learn. And thanks for doing this for the.